Lee from Nintendo Review here and we're so excited to announce that this is the first ever episode of our new podcast, the Nintendo Review News Pod. This is a weekly news pod where Darren, Greg, Nick and myself bring you all the relevant Nintendo news from all over the last week and give you our opinions and discuss its merits. This week, we discuss the slew of new game announcements like Wolfenstein Youngblood, Hellblade for the King, and This Is Pool Snooker Deluxe Edition, Nintendo Labo VR adding Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild support, the new third-party PDP controller supporting headsets for microphones, cross-platform cloud saves in games, the new NES April games for the Nintendo Switch Online service, the Best Buy leaks, are they real or not, the Olympic games from Sega, as always, the sales news, and a lot, lot more. Without further ado, I hand you over to Darren. Right, as always, let's get straight into new games. Another slew of new games announced. Some of them quite exciting though. The first one I'm very excited about, Wolfenstein Youngblood. There were rumours that this was coming out. I kind of thought it had already been confirmed, but it actually hadn't. But it's been confirmed. It's coming out exactly the same day as the other platforms, which is really great, great to see. Bethesda have been, been amazing, to be fair. Coming out July 26th. I've still not played... Wolfenstein 2. I really want to, want to and, I, and I will pick it up at some point because I loved Doom, but you guys played it. Lee, are you excited about this? I know you weren't enamoured. You weren't in, in love with Wolfenstein 2, but is this appeal to you? Yes, it does, and it's it's that extra content of simultaneous co-op play online as well. Now, if you purchase this on other platforms, if one person, for example, I purchase it, they haven't said anything about Switch yet, if I purchase it, on a ps4 then i can let one of you play with me for free so you can download the game and join my game but you then obviously can't get achievements and and it doesn't save anything to your system and i'm wondering and i'm hoping that they do this with switch as well this is the big talking point for me they're allowing, is that really what they're doing? Yeah, oh yeah. Just to get people to get in there, play, you can see you can, the only time you can play it is when I'm playing it and you can join my game. So then when I come offline, you can't play it then. So then it makes you want to go and buy it yourself. I think it's a, That's a great, great game. It's, yeah, awesome, great idea, sorry. awesome idea. It's, I think the PS4 does that with lots of other games anyway. Is that not just like a general feature? Maybe, but it's the first I've ever heard of it. Once again, they haven't said anything about the Switch. If it's... Compa- comparable and Bethesda have put comparable things in with Doom and Wolfenstein 2 already. I can't see why they wouldn't. Just hoping anyway. That's awesome news. That's awesome news. Um, Nick, did you play Wolfenstein 2 or even Doom actually? And, 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 and How are you feeling about this? I've got Doom and Wolfenstein but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Wolfenstein. Shocker. Yeah. But I will. I will. It's on the list. Everything's on the list. So yeah, I'll get this as well. Probably not at launch but eventually I'll get it. And do you think this buddy's Pass system is going to come to the Switch? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling it will. No, I don't. Got a feeling so. Bethesda have been really what? good. I think twenty-five gigabyte download just to play with your friend. Sounds good to me. <laughs> we'll see. We well, will maybe, see. Um, maybe. I'm skeptical. Very skeptical. Obviously, Greg, you didn't love Wolfenstein either. Does it, does that mean this just doesn't appeal to you, or does the co-op aspect make you think actually a co-op first-person shooter sounds pretty fun? Uh, yeah, you're right. That I'm not really that excited for it, but I think it's probably one of those games that somewhere down the line, if I see it cheap somewhere, I, I'd probably pick it up because Wolfenstein was was pretty good. Like I enjoyed it, but I just didn't think it was amazing. Doom is amazing though, yeah. Oh yeah, but it's pretty good. Ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, if those first-person shooter mobs don't do it for you, what about Bulletstorm? with um, Duke Nukem being plonked into the game. Does that excite you, Greg? Okay, Duke Nukem is an <laughs> and I don't even know what Bulletstorm is. Do you reckon Duke Nukem is the male equivalent to Bayonetta? Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty good shout. <laughs> Leah, are you excited about it? What, seeing Duke Nukem crotch shots? <laughs> <laughs> um, full clip edition the, on, the, on the Switch is going to be called Duke of Switch obviously plug in that kind of Duke Nukem uh, DLC which will be in the package it looks fun it, it looks old actually it, it looks you know it's an old gearbox I think it comes back to 2011 so there's no jumping or anything mechanics like that so you compare it to something like Doom which has come and surpassed it it does very similar things to Doom, but it's a slightly more old school effect. But what, what it does pretty good, it's got this kind of grappling hook system where you grapple an enemy toward you and then take them out. And you get bonus points for basically killing as many enemies as you can in one shot and lining them up and crazy effects happen. 
We haven't seen anything about how it runs on Switch, though. If it runs well, are you going to get it? It's a good possibility, yes. But not, not, definitely not, before Wolfenstein Youngblood. That will come first. Fair enough. Um, some games that got announced, which I'm sure none of us care about, so I'll just mention them and then move on, which is Angry Video Game Nerd 1 and 2 Deluxe. Nobody cares. Yeah. Well, there's some new games. Games that are a little bit more exciting. So Sega had a bit of a, an event and they announced quite a bit of stuff. A few things they announced was to do the Olympics in 2020. And I think we mentioned it on this podcast, actually, like they'll do a Mario and Sonic. Uh, will, or will they, but surely they will. And they've confirmed that they will. So they announced four games. One was a mobile game. One was an arcade game. And then two games, which are both coming to Switch, which is the Mario and Sonic um, Tokyo Olympics. And then also like a more traditional, serious simulator, I guess, um, Olympics game. Um, and that's coming to Switch as well. When I first saw the news, I thought, oh, but that one's going to Xbox and PlayStation 4 and we're getting Mario and Sonic, which I'd have kind of been fine with. I like the Mario and Sonic games, but I'm glad to be getting both. I'm sure we've all got memories of track and fields in the, <laughs> in the 80s and in all those stuff. Loved, loved all that. Greg, have you, have you ever played any of the previous Mario and Sonic games? And also, which one out of the two appeals to you most? Um, good question. I played the first one a wee bit on the Wii and it was alright, like you say, we, we all have memories of international track and field back time. Like I absolutely adore the PS1 game, like, I'd still crack it out from time to time to play it. And I don't think any like Olympics game or track and field game or anything has ever really captured that same spirit that I had when I was playing that original one. And Mario and Sonic definitely didn't, so like, I'm, I'm actually not that enthusiastic about the Mario and Sonic game, but then... I don't know if I'm that enthusiastic about the the official one either. Why? I don't think it'll capture the same memories. And like I, obviously when I was younger, like I was playing with my friends, like all four of us, like mashing mm. the controllers and stuff. And I don't imagine I'm going to have that ex- same experience. And if it's mashing buttons and stuff again, I don't know. I don't really feel like <laughs> destroying my Joy Cons any more than I already do. If <laughs> <laughs> you play Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, you don't have to mash buttons. You can just yeah, smash exactly. your arms about all over the place. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Nick? Do any of them in particular appeal to you? Probably the Mario and Sonic one is more likely. Just because, well, like Greg said, the, the serious ones have never been that good since Track and Field. Like, that was a very, very special game, the PS1 one. And I don't know if you guys ever played on the original Wii on the virtual console. They had a turbo graphics game called World Sport Competition. Absolutely no. incredible game. It's, it's a 16-bit Track and Field, and it's every bit as good. It can't be as good as the 8-bit Commodore 64 game, Daily Thompson's Decathlon. <laughs> oh, Daily Thompson's... Uh, I had it on the awesome. Spectrum, but yeah, that was amazing. What's brilliant that is that you, Daily T- Thompson's Decathlon on the Spectrum in the Commodore plays almost identically to Truck and Field on the, on the PlayStation yeah. 1, where it's still yeah. like a 45-degree angle when yeah. you get your jump, and you kind of... Is it plays still just exactly the same, exactly the same, but it's, it's brilliant gameplay. So you might get Mario and Sonic. Have you, did you play any of the others? I th- how many have there been? Oh, low, about five. Um, really? Six. I uh, heard a podcast uh, the other day. Yeah, this, I think this is the sixth one. So you're right there. I remember yeah, five so before. Been, yeah, 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 sorry. I played the original, which was a Summer Olympics one, wasn't it, on the Wii? Yeah. And then yeah. I played the winter one that came out two years later. And that's it. That's all I've played. But none played sort of since in that. No. What about you, Lee? I played the Mario and Sonic on the, the Winter Olympics. was on the DS. I uh, played through that. That had yeah. a bit of a, an adventure mode to it. So it, it kind of added longevity to the, the kind of button bashing. And the original Wii one as well. Good fun. Which one? I quite like the look. And, and the kind of cel-shaded style it's not cel-shaded but it's, it's almost very simple models of the original you know the Tokyo 2020 Olympics it it depends how different they are and how realistic it goes in its in its arcade is it just button mashing or like you say is it waggling they'd probably be both identical in their systems one day because they both developed by Sega yeah maybe I mean if it, hopefully they've got different um, events that'd be just make them a bit different to encourage people to yeah. buy them both which would be nice. And obviously it'd be nice to know if there's any of them got online, you know, if is, is that going to be a possibility and stuff. I'd be tempted, I'd be interested in them both, in all honesty. Um, I loved the first one on the Wii. I, I had so much fun playing that with mates. You know, I mean, it was just a bit of wagon and stuff, but I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. Um, so I'd be well up for, for another Olympics game and I'd up for, up for two of them, as it turns out. Um, but it does depend. And if, if they are the same thing, but obviously they look different, I can't imagine them being the same. I, I think they will be quite different. I'll, I'll be up for it, but um, we will see. But um, it's still good news that we're getting all these games. Um, the other thing that they announced was the next wave of Sega Ages games. Um, you know, the, 
What's more disappointing, um, NES Online or Sega Ages? Um, I'm still not quite sure. So they announced then, what was it? Shinobi, Wonder Boy, Fantasy Zone, Puzzle Action, um, Ikidant, R, um, Herzog's Y and G-Lock. Does anybody care about any of these, Lee? Shinobi. Shinobi. And apparently yeah. it's, the, it's the arcade You love a ninja, version. don't you? Yeah, ninja games, ninja 2D platformers, lovely. Yeah, the original Shinobi would be good, but they also, at the same talk, said that Sega Ages Virtual Racing... Obviously, we know it's happening and it's coming soon, and da da da. It's eighty percent complete, and when they say coming soon, that that to me means like oh, within two weeks. Eighty percent complete doesn't sound like it's coming anytime soon. No, it doesn't. Yeah, especially on the Switch when things get announced and released insanely quickly. Yeah. When people say soon, it's like you better mean it because it will, <laughs> our expectations have changed, Sega. But yeah, Virtual Race is still the one that excites me most, and I'm sure it's the same for you, uh, Nick, Nick and Greg as well, isn't it? Virtual Race is the one we're waiting for. Yep. Or, or is Daytona the one we're really, really waiting for? <laughs> that would be Daytona awesome. Daytona would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice, yeah. Again, very quick, did we, I don't know if we chatted about this. If we did last week, I'm sorry. I th- I'm having a memory we did. Samurai Showdown, the, releasing a brand new version called Resurrecting a Legend. Well, I think it's um, overhyping their, uh, the legacy of the franchise. <laughs> Resurrecting a Legend. That's coming out at the end of the year. They announced that. I think it looks really lovely. Um, and I've been playing Samurai Showdown on the Switch. But we chatted about this last week, didn't we? Because I'm pretty... We chatted about the new one coming out, but this also mm. adds in the extra thing that the Neo Geo collection will be coming, which, puts, Sorry, yeah, which of course, packs yeah. in the six games together. And online. Oh, is it? I did not. Good. They've added online as well, yeah. So it's, just, it's, it's a bit like, oh, okay, well, you've released them all separately for about £6.29 each. When I say about £6.29 each, I mean, it's clearly, obviously, definitely just £6.29 each. Um, and then they're going to release a pack for 30 quid of online. It's like, oh, tempted. But I've got so many beat ups on I'm on Switch and I never play any of them. Did any of those um, Samurai Showdown games make it into the SNK 40th anniversary collection? Yeah. Are they, online? Got it. Go Are get they it. online on there? Probably. Oh, no, sorry. The, oh, the Switch one. Oh, no, sorry. I don't know why I presu- I thought you were talking about the Wii one. <laughs> you know, they released an SNK Wii game which, but with loads more yeah. games in it. Yeah. Sorry, I thought for some reason I thought you meant that rather than the one that's just come out. Um, no, there isn't any on that. Oh, okay. That's a strange, that's just that's their, a strange uh, admission. Anyway, there should be more games on it. I think the SNK one is the arcade games. Ah. And I think the it's a Neo Geo. I think that's part of the Neo Geo stuff. I okay. think. So, um, cool. Um, another game which would appeal to me in another life or in a different environment, but doesn't because um, I don't have any friends. Um, Jackbox Party 6 has been announced. And um, the big feature is Trivia Murder Party 2 is on it. So I'm guessing Trivia Murder Party 1 was one of the better games in the previous collections. Have any of you played any of these games? No. Look at us. Look at three of us shaking our heads. No. I was going to say, no, they are interesting, you know. It's just just how often do you get a... a, a, Because it's not for kids, is it? It, How often do you get, like, an adult-orientated party where four or five of you come around and you've all got... And I like like the concept of having your cell phone as well, your mobile phone, and then having it interact with you on your Switch. Yeah. Great little inclusion. But, yeah, it's going to get so little used out of it. The only thing... Not that we're chatting about this game far more than we need to, but the only thing that this game does do is that... It's meant to be a really good sort of online streamy type game. So for, because because it uses mobile phones, so one of us could have it, stream it, ah, all of us can play yeah. and still play the game. So so a lot of people stream it on YouTube and stuff because only one person needs to stream it and everyone can join in. And I think like thirty people can play it and stuff. So it, it, there is a little bit more scope to to, to play it if he's a bit more organised and Switch made it remotely easy to um, to stream. Thanks for volunteering to, to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> All six. Every time they're on sale, I'm tempted because the, 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 they have been on sale. Um, and I'm like, God, because I, I, I actually occasionally do gather people over and they're not gamer gamers, but they like playing games. So we've played the odd, you know, we used to play weirdly. These are like all like nearly 40s in families and stuff. And uh, Mario Run. <laughs> it's not quite a big game that people don't. the kind of games which you don't need to be any good to play always go down well and we play a lot of board games and stuff so I actually think this would be a pretty good one but one two switch goes down well so that's the level <laughs> we're talking about yeah <laughs> Lama, la, I'm, I'm struggling with this stupidly easy word um, Lamalana Lamalana too Lamulana yeah Lamulana, Lamulana. did, did um, you play Lamulana it was on the Wii Virtual Console wasn't it yeah, it was, and it's meant to be fantastic, a bit Cave Story-esque, if I remember rightly, but um, I never picked it up, but I, I know it was well-received. Yeah, I never picked it up but, myself um, either. But in the kind of on. deluge of um, eShop games. You're not interested in this, Greg? Oh, no, it's too late to pick up the original one now, on the Wii, <laughs> yeah. obviously. 
Um, I considered oh, yeah. it a few times as well, especially whenever the servers was coming to an end. I thought, well, I'll just pick it up, but no, I just I never bothered in the end. On, on that Wii thing, do you know, it's like when it was coming to an end and everyone was going, oh, g- get on the Wii, buy the games, do this, you can decide you get more points, you can buy points. And I was just like, who cares? Who cares? It's, it's gone. When I started unpacking everything, I unpacked the Wii and I was looking at him thinking, oh, I really wish I kind of went on the eShop before he died <laughs> and picked up a few games because there were so many games on that bloody system. But no, Lam- Lamaloa, oh my God. <clears throat> It's too early for me. Lamalana. It's definitely the wrong um, intonation. Um, Nick, I'm guessing this isn't number one on your list. No, I'm Go not straight really. to the top of the backlog. <laughs> Never even heard of it, to be honest. Have you not? Not even the first one? Nope. Fair enough. Have you heard of a game called Persona 5? I have. Ages ago. They, there was like, they found, uh, it was a web domain, and it was Persona 5 R and Persona 5 S. And then Persona 5 R got announced. So people were thinking, you know, is Persona R Switch. And then we've just announced Persona R S is going to get revealed on April the end of 25th. 25th, 25th of April. So everyone is saying it's obviously going to be Persona Switch and they're going to release Joker on the same day. It's all going to be all wrapped in one little beautiful bundle. And then a few days later, the um, a guy called Wario64, whose Nick Closure is, he gets a lot <laughs> of stuff right. He knows a lot about, he knows particularly a lot of stuff about retail and kind of marketing and stuff like that. He knows, he gets quite a lot of leaks in that, in that area of game releases which get put on systems and stuff. But, it, it, but he's, not a, he's not somebody who just like spouts in the know. He's, he's actually just more about facts within the industry. It's, it's a pretty interesting account, to be honest. Uh, but occasionally he'll say, oh, I've heard about this, I've heard about this. But it's more about analysing sales data and kind of just behind the scenes and stuff. He's, so, so basically it's, all, it's come out that Best Buy's internal system have three Switch games on there. One of them is Persona 5, no surprise. One of them is Metroid Prime Trilogy, which, you know, we, how many times have we chatted about that one? <laughs> and the third one is genuinely gobsmacking, if it's true. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past on Switch. I guess Greg... You're not a big fan of LinkedIn, but you've already spoken about this. So you don't, you, you, you don't deserve the wonders of this port. <laughs> but, but how do you feel about it? I mean, I, I guess it's just like, combine it all. Do you think this is true? What do you feel about the, the rumours? What do you feel about the games? The yeah, Link to the Past bit kind of makes it a lot less believable because the timing of it seems so bizarre since they just mm-hmm. announced Link's Awakening. And I can't imagine if they're already remaking that. They're pro- I, I don't imagine they're going to remake A Link to the Past. As as much as like it maybe needs remade, <laughs> like I, I, like if it came out in the same style as like Link's Awakening or whatever, I would um I would probably pick it up and give it another go. But there's part of me that actually thinks a Link to the Past may actually get remade, but I the listing of it actually being on Switch may be a mistake. I could definitely see them using the a Link Between Worlds engine and just putting yeah. it on 3DS and keeping that 3DS <laughs> fire burning. <laughs> Or oh, what if they were going to put it on, maybe the plan was to use the Link Between Worlds engine, they're going to release it on the 3DS, that was the plan, release it on the 3DS, Link's Awakening remake on the Switch, and then the, the, the games that they've been releasing on 3DS have gone so terribly, they've kind of gone, you know what, let's start, maybe re-figure this out, and we'll put it on Switch instead, and somehow the listing still ended up coming out when maybe the intentions changed, because they realised there's no point releasing it on 3DS anymore. Or would that be just too big a job to do that? I don't, I don't know, I don't know, but... I never actually thought about it that way, and you could well be right. Yeah, let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> That'll do, yeah, there you go, done. <laughs> but so do, you, do you think this is probably real, then? Metroid Prime Trilogy comes up so many times. I think Persona 5 will definitely come to Switch. I think that's happening. You would assume Trilogy's coming, but, mm. but then we keep assuming it's coming, and we're still waiting. It is coming. I don't, I don't know what to think of Link to the Past, really. Yeah, like, it's, I think, it's so odd. I think Nintendo will bring SNES games to the console at some point, but it'll be they'll be download. They'll not be like sold in the shop. Or I don't. I really don't know what they're doing here. Download codes. They could sell physical cards for download codes. It could be for that. I, well, they I, already I, do that, don't they? Yeah, I, I very much doubt it though. I, I see it as a, an over enthusiastic employee who's typing games that have been rumoured and they've either got this mixed up or I, I, I can't see a link to the past coming. I would love it, you know. Somebody who works dream in GameStop game. can't add these in. Yeah, dream game would be to pack it in with Link's Awakening as a deluxe deluxe edition and put them both together on the same card. Wow. A- any other company would do that. Any other company would release two very old games in one package. You'd be like, look, we've remastered these two games. How many, t- eight, how many times have we seen remasters of trilogies and collections and stuff and Nintendo are like, we're going to give you them in individually yeah. in full price and you'll, and you'll buy it, won't you? And we're like, yeah. 
the fact they gave us tr- Tropical Freeze without the original Donkey Kong is, yeah, makes me think they're never going to do this. But that makes a lot of sense. A SNES game and a Game Boy game remade in exactly the same graphical style. That feels like a decent double pack, but whatever. Nick, we know your feelings on rumours. Killjoy. See, do you think this is just nonsense? Yep. The first two I can believe, but Link to the Past, I just didn't know. Why? They've got Link's Awakening coming out before the end of the year. They've got Cadence of Hyrule coming out before the end of the year. Why would they have a third Zelda game? It's overkill. Oh, maybe it's coming out next year. Maybe. But then maybe the Breath of the Wild sequel's coming out next year. Yeah, but the, the, Link's <laughs> Awakening coming out in spring and Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out in Christmas. Well, I don't know. I think, I think it's nonsense. And I think we're going to get SNES online at some point. And I think... Probably the, by the end of this year, and I just, no, I, I can't see it happening. I think I think it's a mistake, or someone's playing a very mean trick on everybody. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's too... Nintendo really makes sense. So, it, it, all saying, oh, well, they're releasing Cadence of Hyrule, and then this... It wouldn't stop Nintendo from doing something mental and <laughs> releasing it as well, and then Four Swords Adventures and remaking Triforce Heroes and releasing them all on the same day. It, mm. it wouldn't be that shocking. About Persona, though, about Persona, I... I'm not sure. I heard that that's a PS4 exclusive, isn't it? That Sony paid for an exclusive. For a limited time. Is it definitely limited? Because the DS never got any Persona games except the spin-offs and the 3DS. It was well, always... Did you want to bet £50,000 on Persona 5 is coming to the Switch? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I think it could come, but I, I'm not sure if it's going to be exactly <laughs> Persona 5 or if it's going to be a special version for the Switch. Like well, it will be Persona 5S. I don't know. Dragon, Qu- Dragon Quest Eleven S. True. Which is bigger and better Persona 5 than the PS4 version. Yeah. It, it, it's knows? gonna be. It's, it makes it. I'd like Persona 5 to come. And especially they wouldn't put Joker in Smash with without Joker. it. They wouldn't. They would. They would not they put. Would. They wouldn't. When, when was the last time we had a Metal Gear game on a Nintendo? Yeah, we've had a Metal Gear. Yeah. We've had a Persona as well. You think, yeah, you think when Snake said, hey, Snake is coming to the Wii U, you know, Brawl, and then. <laughs> And then there's no Metal Game after no. Metal Gear Game. No, the thing is, is that he's a pa- you think of him and you think of him as part of Nintendo's history. Like he, that's what Smash is about. It's about a celebration of Nintendo. And I would clash Metal Gear as part of Nintendo's history. Personally, yeah. uh, it wasn't that. It was a surprise. Per- I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe I'm just too optimistic. I don't know. But I'm just like it's uh, is it is coming. There, there'll be no character. And people are talking about Master Chief, co- Master, Chef, Master Chief coming and stuff <laughs> like that. Chef. If Master Chief is in Smash, we're getting Halo. We, we, yeah. we, there will not no, be I a agree. game. I agree. I agree. I think I think Persona Five or a version of it will come, but I just but don't you think know it way. could be more of a. But maybe that's how they get around the exclusivities, like make it as sort of a special version. Maybe that's how. They, maybe it's a technicality. I don't know. Yeah. Or, but I, yeah. So and. Metroid Prime Trilogy is missing the HD subtitle. It's Oof. just Metroid Prime Trilogy, no HD. The one thing I read was that although like employees who work in the shops can't add games to the database, <laughs> ah, but people mm-hmm. do, and they and they do say no, but they do say even internally to prep for the future, they very often do look at strong rumours yeah. and put them in. So occasionally they'll put a game in which doesn't get released. But the, there's some employees were saying. Um, just before E3, they all go on the database to have a look what games are on there because loads of games that are about to be announced are on the... And, so, and they say there's loads of times where games that get announced at E3 are on the database are like a few weeks before. So who knows, who knows? But I'm with you. I, I agree. It doesn't make enough sense for, to, to feel this is true. Although I think Persona 5 and Metro Prime Trilogy are, are nailed on. But um, A Link to the Past? Don't think so. Bloody hell, that could have been the discussion of the week. Hellblade is coming out next week. I'm very, ex- I'm weirdly excited about this game. I'm not going to pick it up straight away. I can't believe it was about coming soon. But this was announced a couple of weeks ago and is out next week. Lee, you going to get this? Exactly the same as you, Darren. I'm not going to pick it up straight away, but I'm excited about it. It looks fantastic. It looks to be running well on the Switch. It's, it, I, I'm so surprised that it's coming out next week already. But the, I think the only downside is it's a whopping 18 gigabyte download. But the price is quite nice as well, twenty five quid. Is it wrong that when I I think of an eShop game, I think if it's if it's over twenty quid, it kind of ooh, it makes me <laughs> pull. I'm like, oh, I don't want to spend that away for a sale. Does, does it appeal to any of you guys, Hellblade? I Not really. I've had it since the original announcement. It's got that uh, Dark Souls vibe, you know, that the way the the kind of combat is based around it. It's obviously not as difficult as that, but uh, I quite like the story building up of uh, mental, you know, um, illness and psychosis. Looks quite mad. Yeah, I think it looks awesome. See what it's like. Um, so you can't get excited about Hellblade, Greg, but I know you can get excited about these next games. 
Lost Levels, Punch Out, and Star Soldier. Can How I excited, excited are you about the next? Can I get excited about it? <laughs> yeah, this is a great <laughs> month. In, in terms of NES games, they're <laughs> they're like they're at least worth looking at. <laughs> The, oh, Lost Le- the Lost Levels is like I think it's the only NES game I actually downloaded on the Wii Virtual Console I, I, that was hard <laughs> did, did you enjoy it though? Do you think it's good? Um, I thought it was alright I mean like the original Mario games are basically decent <laughs> and it was it's just extremely hard and like that last world was uh, the difficulty was uh, it was amazing that, like and having to retry it again and again and again like I kept banging my head against the wall and eventually I did it so I imagine having it there on the Switch and being able to use like save states if you want to, like that will that will help loads. But I don't know if I really want to play it again. But I've never played the I've never played Punch Out in the NES before. Uh so like I do love Punch Out, so like I think it's probably I probably will have to try that at some point. I mean you'll probably hate it because you're you, but I will say <laughs> Punch Out on the NES is brilliant. We think of the gameplay on the SNES, it's not that it's exactly well, the same. I say I've never played it before, I did try it. Must have been a few months ago. I can't even remember what I tried it on. 3DS. Oh, I mean, it's Wii U, I think. Yeah, I tried it briefly. Like, it it didn't feel as satisfying to punch to me and like make contact. Like obviously, you can imagine because like the the NES was more limited than like the Super Nintendo stuff. But I never got that satisfaction of like hitting the opponents or anything. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So lukewarm. <laughs> Nick, are you a little bit more excited than Greg? I'm more excited than Greg and Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what he said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, original Punch-Out is cool. I like it. Lost Levels, I said it before, it's, it can burn in hell. I hate it. <laughs> oh, really? It's just too yeah. hard. Just too... What about with not save got, states? Not got time for that, no. I, I, had, I had first played it, I played it on the, the All-Stars on the SNES. And even as a nine-year-old boy, I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and binned it off forever. <laughs> That's very enough. Star yeah. Soldier is meant to be pretty good. A little pretty good shooter. Pretty good shooter. Um, yeah, with the Mike Tyson thing. See, obviously, because his first tweet was um, Nintendo releasing a new a new um, punch out. You can't get a, have a punch out without Mike Tyson. And everyone's like, <laughs> right? Is he talk? Is he? Does he know something we don't? Or is he just talking about the NES release? And then a tweet later, yeah. he tweeted actual Nintendo and went, everyone knows it's not Mr. Dream and it's really Mike Tyson. <laughs> so <laughs> you're getting too caught up on this, Mike. That's brilliant. Um, Lee, what about you? You're like me. We, we love the NES. Are you excited about these? punch I well, got to play through Punch-Out again. Great game. Uh, the Lost Level's never finished, so Save States are going to help me with that. I'd probably give that a go. And, yeah, the, the other boys are not talking about Star Soldier. Apparently it's a great little vertical shooter. Looking forward to giving that a try as well. Obviously we're playing Star Tropics at the minute for, for the Pod Pals, but for some reason whenever we went into the NES online app, the Lord A to play it, for some reason Twinby just st- stood out to me. Uh, played played that for like a level, <laughs> not just, just a single say, level. Wouldn't say I'm not excited for another vertical shooter on the NES, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like a uh, poor NES, poor NES. <laughs> so Lee, why are you excited about For the King that's coming out? This roguelike RPG, Craig's favourite genre. <laughs> <laughs> that, that yawn there was genuine. Like it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't just because of the news. Uh, it's because of this game. Uh, it looks like a cross between. Amelo, so it's got that kind of board game setup and this RPG elements of Dragon Quest, and it has got its own style basically. It's, it's very polygonal, and it, I, I just think it looks cool from what I've seen of it. I want to see more with a roguelike as well. Hopefully, it will last longer, but um, it's well thought of as well for the king. It comes out on May the 9th, so I got a bit of time before it comes out to have a look a bit, a bit more in depth of what 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 it's got going. I, I love the features on the press release. One of the features is region free. Yeah, it's like yeah, like every game. Everything is. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're a game and you need to, that's one of your key features. <laughs> How good's your game? It's region free. A game that should excite everybody. Vufu Studios announced that oh, last year that they're releasing a game called This Is Paul. Um, and there's, there's like a slew of online Paul games coming out this year, which is really exciting. Um, and they announced this week, this is Snooker, sort of, I say sponsored, but like featuring Stephen Hendry who was like the snooker player when I was a kid. And and there was sort of like a double part. So this is Paul, this is snooker. I love Paul and snooker games. I'm particularly excited about this. Lee, 
do you, do you what, what are you more excited about? The fact that we've got a snooker game or the fact that you can play Stephen Hendry? <laughs> the snooker game. Of course, Stephen Hendry. But even as a kid, Stephen Hendry was a bit boring, wasn't he? It said, it he was said, a boring one, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It said in the, the intro and the video to it, it said, Stephen Hendry's attacking style. I thought he never attacked. It wasn't until uh, <laughs> players that came out later. He was a defensive player, surely. He was boring. But that's why he was eight times world champion or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can buy This Is Pool separately. If you want This Is Snooker, you have to buy it in the bundle, which I'll probably end up doing anyway. You can't buy it afterwards, like as DLC or anything? Ooh, good point. Uh, they haven't said. Mm, they said it's can, the yeah. deluxe edition. Probably, yeah. You'll probably be able to add to it after you've purchased it, yeah. Is this better than the official Snooker game? The Snooker out, 19 it is looks the other it. one, isn't it? Yeah, it looks it. It does look better. Who the student? It's not Vufu, is it? Who did um, like Pure Pool and stuff? Yes, it that is. It's these yes. guys, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, the same yeah, guys. this is yeah, the one that to be uh, excited about then, yeah. Uh, was it Pool Hustlers or Hustle Kings? Sorry, Hustle Kings. Was Hustle them Kings as well. in uh, Pure Pool, yeah. Yeah, all the same. They were amazing games on the PlayStation, yeah, amazing. So. Very exciting. What, what about um, you, Greg? Can you be persuaded by this? I played Hustle Kings a wee bit on the PS4 with my brother. Uh, only like a couple of games, really. Never really get into it. So I, I genuinely don't know which of the, the snooker games I'm actually more interested in. Like, I'll just have to wait and see on that one, if I even pick any up at all. I'm sure my brother will pick up at least one of them, so uh, I'll at least get to try one of them out at his. Yeah, it would be annoying if you've got like spread out, because you kind of want them all to come out at the same time and Get the reviews out, get the impressions out, see which one's best, but we'll see. What about you, Nick? Is, is pool and snooker just not your thing at all? Nope. Sorry. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. We, no, we, we play fun. was the last time, I think, I played a pool or snooker game. They had, po- they had pool on Wii Play, didn't they? On the Wii. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call that a snooker game, but... That's fair enough. That's fair enough. It's actually a decent laugh. It was alright. Yeah, no, I like Wii Play. Different. Um, what about Super Meat Boy Forever? Does that is that kind of more your game? I've not or played no? it. Well, I'd, no one I'd has. Be, it's not out yet. I don't know. I would. I would. It looks all right, but it's just. This is the know. endless runner one, isn't it? It's all, no, no, no. Super Meat Boy is a super hard platformer. This no, 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 one, no. no. This super Meat Boy Forever is an auto runner. This is an endless runner. Ah, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. And and it, it it as your skill progresses, it progressively gets harder. So it kind of matches your skill. So it's constantly challenging you. Some system they've got running in there. I actually quite like the look of this. I I haven't played the original Meat Boy. And look, going back and looking at the eight bit kind of graphics on that, it was a bit. Uh, this one looks really nice. It's running very nice, but. The talking point of this, and I'm trying to bring up a picture, is that it's delayed. It's been delayed from its April release, and I don't know when. And then they issued an apology saying, Team Meat isn't some studio owned by an evil asshat corporation. We can give our employees holidays. And then the evil asshat is in capital E and capital A. Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> what what a jibe at another company's practices. Brilliant. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Oh, there isn't um, Take Two, Rockstar, which might be the real... Yeah. Activision aren't far behind either, are they? It's a shame because you kind of see, sort of see Rockstar, even though I don't like their games at all, but you sort of feel as, as if they deserve respect at least. And then all that came out about Red Dead and it's like, oh, God, mm-hmm. we're all as bad as each other. Now, Nick, you've 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 slated. I've I've come to you loads. You're like, are you interested in this? Not really. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, whatever. Not really. Now, this one, surely you're excited about. Enter the Gungeon, the final update. It, it seems like pretty substantial as well. Um, I think it came out last night. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I've already right. da- I've already out. downloaded and installed it last oh, wow. night. Yeah. And then, did you play it? A little bit. I put in about twenty minutes last night. I think before but I it's went a to bed. pretty impressive update, isn't it? It's substantial, but all all the updates, to be honest, have been pretty pretty big. They've added a lot of stuff as they've gone. I I paid for this game for some reason. It's a lot cheaper in Russia than anywhere else. I paid four pound for this game. It's actually on sale it. at the moment now for about a fiver yeah. as well to, yeah. to say, hey, this is the last DLC. Come and get it for half price. Which is cool. absolutely amazing amount of content for the price really 2.5 uh, million copies it sold which is kind of bonkers for an indie. um now greg no no i can't go to lee first because i think me and greg were a little bit close when you and lee I, I don't hate it but but lee you love this game as well yeah, oh yeah so what are you particularly excited about this or have you are you done with the game i no, i've i've been playing it recently over the last week as well when it when, as soon as they said hey there's more dlc coming oh i need to get back into that so i played it a couple of times this week and i played it for about an hour today as well Unfortunately, it seems in especially heavy rooms, like Nick said last week as well, there's a bit of slowdown. There seems to be more slowdown now. 
to the point of pausing and causing an error which closed the game which has never wow. i've played it for over 30 hours it's never happened before so i'm hoping they if there is something wrong with it they're going to end up putting at least one more patch out to um, correspond with this dlc which seems to have adversely affected the game um, maybe i'm going to speak for greg when i ask this question as well but how do you play this game for 30 hours <laughs> i don't mean that it's like it's a bad game but like it's got like five levels or whatever it's like how do you, you play for 30 hours? You just get in there and shoot. It's so... I mean, I know what the game is. <laughs> and it's got, it's got that thing. People go, oh, it's a roguelike, so I won't like it because it'd be random levels. But the, It's uh, not I, random I think we levels, talked about it, it before. Yeah. The rooms aren't random. The rooms are crafted and uh, solid things. It's just the way they fit together. So the, the, when you go through a door to the next room, that's random. It, it'll randomly generate an already made room. So the rooms are specifically crafted for the game. which But the layout of the the yeah. game that feel of um, you know it doesn't make you bump into walls that shouldn't be there or whatever you know it's well crafted but it's the layout of the ho entire level map which changes every time mm -hmm. and every time you play it's a different game you get a different yeah. weapon and like Nick said there's just so many different weapons I don't think I've seen I, I no way have I seen every single weapon in this game yet and I haven't finished it either I haven't finished it also I'm 35 plus hours and I've never finished yeah. it I, I've seen the fifth level maybe three or four times I've same, been same the final boss once I've never seen the final One boss time. and it's Greg have you seen nails. the final boss <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the first level boss <laughs> have you seen I don't think so Oh, I can't even imagine putting 30 hours into it at the minute. Like, okay. I really need to be sold on it because like, every time I try to jump in and play it, I don't like how it looks and it just feels. I don't like how it feels either. So Yeah, that's my main thing. It didn't feel so, like the shooting mechanics. I, I feel like when you think of stuff like um, Smash TV, which it reminds me of or something like that, like the shooting, it's fast. And this just feels a bit slow. Like, do, 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 you know, so it just feels a lot. And I know you can get guns, that like machine gun. I know you can get faster guns. But it, I play it and I'm a bit like, just, it's not as satisfying as when you, when you play like twin stick shooters like Geometry Wars or, or anything like that. It's not, and it feels like it, that's the kind of game I th sort of think it should be. Like, it feels like a little bit faster sort of mechanics. But I enjoy it. I think it's a good game. But people talking about it is this some masterpiece. I'm just like, really? <laughs> like, what, there aren't, what by am the I way, Sassy, there aren't five levels either. There's more is than it six? five levels. No, there's more. Oh, are they? Oh, and, is there? Uh, there's secret levels, and I've yeah. only of the floors. been able... Yeah, I've only been able to find... I think there's ten levels altogether, so so five secret ones. Oh, I've only wow. been able to find two. I can't find ah, the other three. okay. And no, I was going to say, there's a lot about it to like. I, I, I don't mean it in a negative. I, I guess I don't understand the high praise, but I think it's a decent indie. And I like the, you know, mm. like the fact that the bosses change. Like you play this first level and you die or whatever, then you go again. It's like a completely different boss. It's like, okay, there's, a, there's some nice stuff. We're going to chat about it again in a bit, I'm sure, but when Nick talks about it when he's, um, for his game, so we won't chat about it too much. Right, we're, we're going to plough through these next, next batch. We're not even going to talk... Uh, Mario Tennis has got his uh, monthly update. We've got some headbands for Spike. We've got K-Mech or... Ka Did you say Kamek? k mech or Kamek? I have always said Kamek. Okay. You didn't in the, yeah, in that's the news. Enough. Maybe I change oh. for how I, well, the time of day I change. Depending on what it is. Oh no, it's, it's Kamek. <laughs> 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 Obviously. <laughs> let's not chat about that, but let's chat about... Because we want to chat about the next one a little bit more. But maybe again we should save this for another, another conversation. Now Monolith... Okay, I'm a bit confused about this news story. Obviously, Monolith have put a job call out and everyone's talking about Zelda and stuff like that. This news item says it's confirmed that they're working on Zelda. Have they confirmed they're working on Zelda? It has been confirmed they're working on Zelda. Basically, it's confirmed through that they've asked... Basically, their Twitter advertisement was with a Zelda logo, logo on there saying, you will be working on the next 3D Zelda title for Monolith Soft. We need artists, planners, yeah, I'd call designers. That confirmation. So it's like, there, it's confirmed. It's confirmed yeah, okay. through yeah, yeah, their yeah, yeah. advert for... And it's just kind of mad. Now, now, obviously, they've worked on previous Zeldas before. So it could just be that, like they're working yeah. on Breath of the Wild 2. They tend to do the back-end stuff, don't they, for the, the game engine and and the world development, like, just like they did. Basically, they're taking their skills from the kind of Xenoblade games and then transferring yeah. it across into Zelda. Yeah. Planners and designers is not a late-stage bit of the game, though. That is true. Yeah. the true. beginning of games. And somebody pointed out that a year ago or two years ago, Monolith did a job call-out to work on a, a, their new big adventure game. And people have they released an image for it, which looks great. People have zoomed in on the image and they found the Triforce. <laughs> so they're saying, so the, now the rumours are that they're working on a Zelda on their own. Like they're working on a big Zelda one all on their own. 
which is kind of which is kind of mad. I've I'm I can't get into Xenoblade games. Nick, what do you feel about this? Do you think it's just Breath of the Wild two? Do you think it's their own game? What, what do you think this is? I don't know. I didn't know that that what you just said. So it could be. Isn't doesn't Xenoblade X on the Wii U? Doesn't that use the same engine as? Uh... Breath of the Wild. Yes, very, something very similar, yeah. And also Xenoblade 2 as well, yeah? Yeah. On the, on the Switch. Yeah. So they know it. it, be, it well, the engine's done then, that means. So, in theory, the game was what... Breath of the Wild was, what, five years in development, wasn't it? I think. Was it five years it five? in development? In my head, I'm like eight, but maybe it is five, yeah. There'll probably be a lot less for the next one. If they've been working on it since release, well, maybe since they finished the DLC, I reckon we'll maybe see it back end of next year. Or back end of, yeah, back end of next year. But do you think this is what Monolith are working on? You don't think Nintendo will be working on that? No, I think it's going to be the same as Breath of the Wild. So uh, Nintendo will develop it and uh, Monolith will do the, the, the dog work, basically. So why are they hiring planners and designers? Next Xenoblade. Yeah, but this is for Zelda. This is the job <laughs> listing for Zelda. Well, isn't Monolith like already like 200 people? It's yeah. a big old studio here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so maybe, maybe they've got probably got multiple stuff going on at the same time. I'm sure they're working on the, the Wrath of the Wild sequel. Definitely Xenoblade sequel, hopefully X2, and then probably something else as well. Why not? A new Zelda game. <laughs> new Star Fox game. <laughs> Do, I know what they're doing. Two what? new stories in one. 3D remake of yeah. A Link to the Past. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of not joking, actually. I'm, I'm sold on that idea. Uh, Greg, what do you think about all this? Uh, obviously, they were on the next Zelda, and I like it's no surprise that like, Monolith will probably be involved in, in some way. So, like, but do you, yeah. well, I guess what I'm asking is, do you think they're being given a Zelda to make, like Cadence of Hyrule, like Capcom did with Oracle and Ages? And do you think they're being given a, an opportunity to make their own Zelda? I could definitely see a time where they would make a big Zelda adventure game, but have the sort of combat style of the Xenoblade games. Ooh, I like so that. So it's like, I, like um, I, d- I don't really like the, the thought, actually. But um, Sounds horrific, <laughs> Greg. So, so it'll be interesting <laughs> like to see like if they did do something like that, like what your sort of like your team would be, like if you fight along with Zelda and... Tingle. Imper and... Maybe Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> All the same characters, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I could, definitely see it. I could see them doing something like that because obviously, like, we've got Hyrule Warriors and stuff, so like these these franchises do branch out now and again. So I could see like a, a game in that style. Do you think Link will be shouting? I'm really feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what will what will Tingle be shouting? More importantly? <laughs> uh, Lee, tell me about Umihara Kawasaki Fresh. Kawa- Kawasaki Fresh. Kawasaki Fresh. Uh, it's really racist. It's uh, only on the Japanese eShop as a demo, and it's really easy to uh, go through it because everything's in the same place on the Japanese eShop as it is in the European eShop. So it's very easy to find by going to like future games. Then you go there, click on the, the, the one down from buy, which is the demo one, which is slightly smaller. So you click on that, and it's all in English. Now, the game isn't even coming, it hasn't got a date in uh, Europe yet, uh, except for it's coming somehow, li- at least later in the year, but it's got a date in. Japan it's not out so I played the demo give it a try well thought after 2d platformers in Japan played it for about an hour last night before going to bed and I just don't get on with the mechanics it's really really incredibly slow paced 2d platforming and you've got this fishing line which is elasticated so you kind of pull back and shoot off at the right direction to uh, fire yourself in in a direction basically that you want to go but it's it's really awkward it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a very, very weird game. It's called Fish with Huge Walking Feet. It looks weird. It plays weird. It's not for me. I thought it might be, but no. Is it because you like fish humans? <laughs> this is your thing. You're disappointing gameplay. Nick, I want to know about Dead Cells, this new update, because I'm, I want to buy Dead Cells and it's never on bloody sale. Really? Has it not been but, on sale yet? No, that's no. the only game in the top 10 best-selling indie games that I've not got, and I want it. Mm. So, what, what is this new update exciting, particularly? Or I haven't even downloaded it yet, actually, to be honest. I recommend Dead Cells. It's also... Actually, do you know what? It's exactly the same as Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> in the way that the... In the, in the, in the way that the in the way that the level's constructed, so it's they again they have the designed specifically designed rooms, corridors, but they're put together differently. Mm. 
Is the gameplay so, better? Probably. Well, personally, for me, no. I prefer Into the Gungeon, but I also really like Dead Cells. So, but it's like, very different, isn't it? Is it it's like a hack and slash yeah. type. It's. I try to think what what it could be similar to. It's a it's a very throwback to the sixteen bit era, but there's nothing really. You can upgrade your weapons, your, your secondary weapons, and. You just basically have to go through the level as fast as possible. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's fun. <laughs> no, no place sure. You still be on it there? Uh, <laughs> I've still got no idea what the game is. Uh, but this update then. So, so what about this update then? What, why, this is not paid DLC, is it? It's just a free, free, free update, free patch, or whatever. No, it's not paid DLC. I don't think. Basically, it's very. It's actually more similar to Enter the Gungeon than I thought because you start off with a simple sword and you have to collect cells so every time you complete a level you get a chance to spend your cells and permanently unlock stuff so you can start the the run the, with different weapons and you can upgrade when you say like, permanently do you mean do you mean permanently so if yeah, you yeah, died I mean in the game and you start yeah enter the, all those games should do that but enter the gungeon does when you because at the end when you defeat a boss and enter the gungeon you get these little rooms uh, yeah and they like um yeah, it's money basically isn't it yeah yeah and then you can unlock stuff in the shop and then that will appear in the game when yeah. you're playing through it so the more you play through it into the gungeon that is and the more money yeah. you accrue the more weapons you unlock next time you go through you'll have a better selection more powerful weapons at your disposal yeah. whereas dead cells you can get your buffs and upgrades from the start of the run like you can buy weapons and then when you begin the game they'll be waiting for you before you start the first level. That Potentially. Sounds good. Sounds good. Potentially. Well, I'll get it when it's on sale, so whoever makes Dead Cells, don't know your name. It's a French Put developer, I think. I can't remember the name. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a funny name for a company. French developer. <laughs> <laughs> definitely recommended. Pick it up. Pick it up. Will do. Will do. Greg, we know how much you love the N64. We know how much you love the Banjo-Kazooie killer, ukulele. <laughs> how do you feel about playing um, ukulele in um, N64 style? <sighs> Ukulele, oh, such a disappointment. <laughs> but the the new 64-bit tonic that's just came out has actually made me think maybe I need to go back to the game just to, to check it out in this style, just to see what it's like. It's a, it's a big you, ask. You, you didn't finish it, it, did you? La- I think I'm on the last level, but I just I, I just hate it, that game, pretty much. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's one of those games where it's like, you'll go, you'll walk for a bit and you'll think you're going in a direction where like oh, something might happen, but you need to, uh, you'll hit, hit a brick wall and it's like you need to do a million other things before you can do this one thing and it's just you're constantly banging your head against the wall and it's so annoying. I will check it out again just to see this tonic, but the thought of bringing that icon back to the, the front of the home screen. So. <laughs> 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 Try and finish finish the game in, in 64-bit style. Um, Nick, have you have you tried it out yet? Yeah, I finally, got, I finally downloaded this a couple of weeks ago. It's been on my, my list since launch, but it's never had a big enough discount for me to jump in. So I jumped in, played about an hour. It's all right. It's very... You can you can see it's very rare, like very banjo style, and I tried the update last night, and it look. I mean, it needs fog to really capture the <laughs> sixty four vibe. But I haven't played Torok yet, so I can't really compare because f- from screenshots, Torok doesn't doesn't really look like it did on the N sixty four, and this also doesn't look like an N sixty four game to be honest. So you don't think it's a very good sixty four bit update? It's just. Would you like to play this game with <laughs> graphics? Yes. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's, right. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, it's I'm fog. never, ever, ever, ever gonna find out. <laughs> if it ran, if it ran, if it ran at 15 frames a second and was uh, and had a lot of fun, <laughs> then it would be then it would be an N64 update. I love it. You're, what you're saying is this really it makes the game a bit, <laughs> but it's still not quite <laughs> enough to relive not those N64 enough, years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Very quickly, Nick, um, Civilization VI, an mm-hmm. amazing game. I, d- I need to get back into this game badly. Every time I see it on my screen, I'm like, it's daunting. I've, I've not played it for so long. It's daunting to to jump back in, to be honest. I, I, no, I'm, I'm in exactly it. the same position. It is daunting because I know if I sit and play it, it's going to be hours. So that's why I haven't yeah. switched it back on. And I'm actually really glad about this uh, this update where you can link your Steam and Switch account because I would much rather play this on PC with a mouse and keyboard than on the Switch, personally. Oh, okay. So do you think you'll use this then? Yeah, because that's, that's the, 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 the patching it up so you can share your save between Steam and... It's great, it's great. definitely. Okay, have you, have you got it on Steam? This. Nope, but it's like three or four quid in Russia, so... Oh, okay, so you're going to pick it up on that and then you can like move between the two? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's really good. Lee, Tetris... Died... 
I love Tetris and I love the concept of this, but the net game never fully, fully, fully grabbed me. In all honesty, I think it was because people, it, the, the standard was too high. It was too, pen- it was difficult to penetrate in a fun way. You didn't feel it's just like oh well, you know. So I kind of dro- dropped off it, but they've added a bit of an update which didn't appeal to me because I've got a later Pro controller, so it, it only affects the first wave of Pro controllers, and I've just been using my Smash one. But there's like. Some kind of hard drop setting. Fill us in on the details. First of all, there's four kind of things. Oh, sorry, three things that kind of changed in this new update that dropped last week. They got a new win screen. So if you win, you you can... Well, I never win. I never see this new win screen apart from in the screenshots of other people winning. <laughs> Didn't see the old one. <laughs> there's a disclaimer before you play online. Something like, hey, we're going to share your data with 200 other companies or something like that. And the, the <laughs> most exciting thing, like you just said, is the hard drop settings, which... Because of the the way the old Pro Controller was set up without the metal bar going down the middle of the D-pad, which separates basically the up, down, left and right. So when you press left, sometimes it it would automatically detect up and you'd automatically then drop your uh, Tetramino right down to the bottom in one go by accident. And it happened, I reckon if I was playing a game, it happened two or three times in one play and it would happen too often. So I ended up going to the Joy-Cons and playing it with the Joy-Cons instead, which which worked perfectly. So now you've got the option to change the sensitivity of this hard drop setting to high, which is good for the Joy-Cons, and low, which is good for this uh, broken Pro Controller D-pad. And it works. I've tried it, and I've had no problems once switching it to the, the low settings. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I stopped listening when I heard you say the word <laughs> Tetramino. <laughs> Did anybody else say Tetronimo? Tetronimo. Tetramino. 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 Yeah, 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 oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got so distracted by Tetramino. I was like, I can see his lips moving, but I can't hear anything anymore. <laughs> um, Tetramino. Tetromino. Interesting. Right, Lee, you chat about this that none of us lots cares about. This controller um, with um, audio jack. Why aren't Nintendo making them? This is PDP, third party company. It's called the Face Off Deluxe Plus Audio Wired Controller. It's got a 3.5 millimeter jack with audio controls so you can turn the volume up and down while holding a button and using the D pad. It looks like a third party controller, unfortunately. You know, it doesn't have that quality of the Nintendo controller, but you, you know, it's got a plug and play. So, I, Obviously, games, you need to have that built-in audio, like Fortnite, for it to be useful with. But then you can plug your headphone headphones into the controller and automatically talk just like an Xbox One controller. Um, why Does it work? Why Nintendo made one? Well, well you're they, right there, but what I'm saying, when it's docked, I wonder if it... Can, can it even... I'm sure they wouldn't release it if it didn't really yeah, work, it, but, it must work. But do you yeah. know what I mean? If it's docked, I wonder if it like cuts the... Sound, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it does. Yeah, why haven't Nintendo do it? Maybe we, there's something we never chatted about on the Switch Pro, actually. Surely a headphone jack. Or maybe they're going to go Apple and just just do wireless only. I'd take that. I'll be all over yeah. that. Yeah, I've got a nice pair but, of um, Bluetooth headphones. Lovely. Yeah, why, why didn't they release one? Well, yeah, we'll see what happens with the Switch Pro later in the year. Starlink, I want to chat about this. I know, Greg, you've just bought this game. I don't know if you've tried it out yet. I just want to say, they've just announced, and they're not releasing any more toys, but they've announced that they're working on one last update for the game um, with loads of free missions, loads of new challenges and activities. They've got loads of dig- digital ships and more stuff. And they did the Star Fox update of a month or so ago, and they've said that the game below expectations. Let's be honest, this game bombed massively. I mean, this I paid 60 quid for this game at launch, and about three days later, it was like 20 quid everywhere, and it's the same all over the world. <laughs> I feel as if they put a lot of effort into it. It's a new IP. It's, it's a really good game, and they're putting loads of effort into it, and it, in it bombed. I just think it's a bit of a shame on that. Uh, but um, I just wanted to kind of mention that. But, um, Greg, have you played it yet? Not yet. I've, I put the cartridge into it so that I could download whatever needs to be downloaded to play it. So it's, it's ready to go when, when I'm ready to give it a go. But even before I bought it, like I'm not excited to play this game at all. So I, like it can only really surprise me when I do eventually try it. Like I, I had a CEX voucher. And I found out that it, the Star Fox, uh, the sorry, the Starlink starter pack was in CX, my local one, for like twelve pounds. So I thought, right, I don't really shop in CX that much, so I'll use my voucher, get this, just, just bas- basically just for the R wing. <laughs> so if the game's any good, that's just gonna be a bonus. Yeah, uh, yeah, interesting to see what you think. Maybe this should be our next pod pals. Um, Nick, have you picked this up? What What are your views well, on all this? I would like to get it and. You said it's very cheap, but unfortunately for me and Lee, it's not cheap where we live. I've never seen it reduced. I've never even seen it in uh, in store, to be honest. 
I don't think anywhere's stocking it where I am. So if I'm planning to come back to the UK in summer for a couple of weeks, so I might pick it up then if it's if I can find. It. I'd prefer it physical. I know it was on sale in the eShop, but I'd prefer the physical version because it's quite a big download. So. Well, you, you wouldn't sort of like it, buy it and send it to your mates or your family or something. So then you could, you've definitely got it cheap. It could be even cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> in summer, it could be, could be even cheaper. One pound. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, that's 50p too expensive. So. Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's I'm joking. I, I will get it. I'm, I, it, does, it does look pretty good, to be honest. So. It's all right. It's definitely worth 50p. Lee. Games in Taiwan, uh, when you go into a physical shop, are notoriously not expensive. They are the same prices in England, but they never get reduced in price. You'll see old games. It's probably the same in Russia. You see... Nick shaking his head, uh, nodding his head. It's, they, they yeah, just, similar. They similar. just don't mm-hmm. reduce price. They don't have sales. It's always they got games sitting there from five years ago, and they still the same price. It just it completely baffles me. Just drop the price for Christ's sake. And the the, the second hand as well. The, their prices for the second hand games, and there's only one store that does it near me because they don't like second hand stuff in Taiwan either. They just buy new all the time. Their second hand stuff is it's normally about six quid cheaper maximum. So I, when you look at the second hand one in a battered box and a new one, oh, I'd rather buy the new one anyway. No, I'm not going to pick it up until it does drop in price. And by the sounds of it, it won't be until I go back to England and pick one up myself as well. Sort of similar. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth getting. Yeah, like Greg said, even just for the hour wing, yeah. it's worth it. Very quickly, before we get on to the finally, the last bit of news. Yoshi Crafted World got to number one in UK and Japan. I think it made it UK twice, two weeks in a row in the UK. And it'll probably get you maybe number one in, in America too. Pretty good for a game which sort of came relatively well reviewed, but it didn't get any big splash or anything. But it's like Switch. Did it, did any Wii U game get number one? <laughs> Do you know in the UK charts? I'm guessing who's played. I mean, I know Greg, you've dabbled a little bit. Lee, you haven't. Nick, have you played it? Just a demo. Just a demo. Greg, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts? Um, well, I've only played three levels so far. I got it last weekend, but I, I never really got a chance to play it till the middle of this week, so I've only really dabbled in it. Yeah, like, it's a really chilled out game. I actually, like, I think I'm going to really like it. I'm not sure if I'll like it as much as Woolly World, but it's, it does feel pretty similar in many ways, and, like, it, it like the graphical style is, is amazing. The only thing I will say about that is there's it's slightly blurry or something. It does If it was a wee bit crisper, it would look absolutely astonishing but there's just just a, a wee bit of like sort of blur that sort of takes away the edge a wee bit and that does diminish the graphics a wee bit but like the, the overall style is just amazing and I'm, and I'm looking forward to playing playing more it's going to look amazing on the switch pro it fixes yeah. that <laughs> switch can handle it and it? it's dynamic resolution and uh, when things get hot on the screen blurry it goes yeah what it does do it it also feels like you can sort of see a bit of artifacting on the thing like it's something i don't know if it's the blurry that bothers me it's sort of like you can sort of see that it's like a little glitch like tiny on, on like the edges or something like a bit of a glow and it kind of takes you out of the effect because when it when you when you know when it looks really crafty and it looks like they're made of material and it looks amazing, but then but when it when it looks like a like graphics, it's like a weird thing to say. It kind of really like a woolly world. You play that and it kind of all fits into the style and it always feels like wool. And but this is like it looks a bit something about it. But maybe it's the Unreal Engine. I don't know. But it's something about it. It's like oh, it kind of looks a bit like good graphics rather than genuinely like craft this is only occasionally but it kind of really jars um anyway the last bit of news that i want to talk about we had a we've already discussed about this like will labo vr be incorporated into other games we chatted about it and then a few days ago they announced it and it's the most bonkers couple of <laughs> games i've chosen in my opinion breath of the wild the whole game can be played in vr and they've created um some three levels on mario odyssey like bespoke vr sort of sections i am still Staggeringly excited about this. Um, I was excited about VR anyway. I cannot wait for next week. But this is just like on another level. And now my brain is just going. Every every month they're going to launch new games for you to use VR. Every month there's going to be more and more. And I bet third parties are going to steam in on this. But before I kind of kind of blab too much about it, Lee, what are your? Is, is this made you go? I'm going to get it. Or are you still? Gonna hold out. What, what are your thoughts on it all? Sorry, originally, you know, the, the original trailer. I thought, oh, this is so cool, and then the enthusiasm waned. 
and this has made me pick it up. I am going to be April the 12th. It comes out in Taiwan as well, so I can get the official one in Taiwan, full price, obviously. They don't reduce the price of Labo over here either. I'll go, I will go and pick up, but I'll end up picking up the starter pack, which is with the VR goggles and the blaster, and give that a try, see how that is. And then this comes out then on April the 25th. Zelda, Blur of the Wild. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and those Mario Odyssey ones would be fun. Obviously, we're all holding out for Mario Kart. Yeah. No, no pun for Odyssey. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What about you, Greg? You're you're someone, right? Who will would would I imagine that you'd love Labo? Like you love gimmicky, quirky Nintendo, shit, right? Yeah, generally. Yeah. That's like, this is the epitome of that. It's yep. not. It's not going to last you more than twenty minutes, even. You, but those twenty minutes are like unlike any other twenty minutes you've done before. And for me, that's <laughs> worth it. But so I'm just kind of. And I think you you bought it and took it back. You dabbled. You waited. Like, what is is Labo VR going to be? It is it going to tip you over the edge? I think I do want to see like Breath of the Wild and Odyssey in particular, just in VR. And I think I think you're right. There's going to be more expansions. I think Mario Kart VR will come at some point. So I think I will pick up either the starter pack or the full kit. Caboodle. At yeah. some point, it's, it is my birthday next month. So depending on maybe I get vouchers or something for somewhere, maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll use it for that. And if I like it, there's a good chance I'll pick up some of the other kits as well. Yeah, see how it goes. Especially if they release Mario Kart, where you can use the steering wheel and somehow yeah. sellotape the um, <laughs> VR to your face. <laughs> Don't know what they're gonna do, Nick. What about you? I think you're still on the fence, aren't you? I'm not going to get this yet. The 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 uh, announcement didn't do anything for me, really. I don't want to play Blur of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried VR before? Yes, and it was an awful experience. Because <laughs> because the resolution was terrible on the game that I played, and I felt sick almost immediately. So, mm. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, mm. No, I think... like I, I, I want to see Breath of the Wild in, in, in VR, of course. And... I'm interested, but I'm not going to buy it just to see that. I think, actually, personally, for me, the games that come with Labo VR look more interesting than Odyssey ones or seeing Breath of the Wild in VR. I think what, once Mario Kart supports it, and if you can do it from a first-person point of view, and if it's at least 720p, I'll probably probably get it then. That's when I'm ready to jump in. But now, no, not yet. Switch Pro. Yeah, why not? Maybe when you put a slightly yeah. better screen. Like I know you wouldn't be able to do it with like the Labo VR with Mario Kart or whatever, but like I love the thought of being able to like play Mario Kart and like using your motion to like physically throw like the <laughs> bananas or like the shells out in the, like a specific direction or whatever. Be pretty on the vehicle vehicle <laughs> kit, they've got. Um, uh -huh. And imagine if they if they was going to do it, I'd imagine they'd, they'd probably use this. I mean, you could have two Joy Cons in one in each hand and sort of turn it like a like a, and then you could still lob with the motion with a Joy Con it, motion. It, yeah. It, could maybe work, but with the vehicle kit, they've got a lever on each side, and in in the in the the driving game, you throw like bombs and stuff like that. Like you pull it back and let go, and it like throws stuff, or you you can turn it to be like a buzzsaw and stuff like that. Like you could easy that they could be weapons, but having these, it's not quite as it's not as much fun. But they even got like a a, like a turbo pull thing as well that you could do. It's, yeah, it's it's gotta come, it's gotta come, it's gotta come. But um, I do worry that they want us to just do this all the time. They do. I mean, how how many seconds would it be before blood just disappears from your arms? Being held up to your face, or you could just put the labo on the floor and just lay face down with your face <laughs> into the into the labo. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. I cannot wait, and I, I, I am I, a bit of me is just kind of like blown away by you. You're all a little bit like yeah, with a little bit like yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm not that bothered. Oh, it's gonna be. I was like, what? It's kind of virtual virtual reality Mario and, and Zelda. It's like what? Crazy. I'll tell you what it's like. Uh, me and Lee will um, give our views and see what it's like. But the thing is with Zelda, it's like, I don't want to play it for 100 hours, but this is my sort of views on it anyway. Like, playing it for 10 minutes will be an amazing experience. Just f going off that cliff, floating around Hyrule, having a look around, maybe having a fight with the Guardian, seeing what it's like. That is enough for me. I'll, I'll pay 30 quid for that. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not quite. I'm not that mad. The Mario one is, I think, would generally be brilliant. There's a game called Astro Bot on the PlayStation VR, and I've not played the full game. I got rid of my PlayStation VR before that, which is annoying because there's a demo of that game in a, in a collection. Um, the, the, I can't remember what the collection's called now. It meant to be the demo collection, um, or PC, or PlayStation VR Worlds. Anyway, um, one of them. And it's got Astro Bot in it. And it was one of the... It's weird because it's just like a platform game, and you just sort of don't expect it to be so good. But weirdly, it was one of the most impressive ones, where you sort of see the world in front of you, 
and then you're you're it's like you're looking down on this sort of like diorama and you're controlling this little character in the world and it's it was like the most surprising VR experience and how amazing that felt and I feel as if if Mario Odyssey sort of does that where you sort of they've created these little levels and you're looking into it and then controlling Mario running around I think it could be pretty special but Greg anyway. has said it before but Captain Toad if they could utilise Captain Toad in that you're looking down on that kind of 3D diorama and then looking around corners and stuff that Captain Toad can't see around to see what's around the edge yeah. could work as well uh, yeah I think I slagged Greg off when he said yeah. that at the time I was like what well, oh, right. I, I, I was actually remember. thinking I was like yeah, I know. And I was like, no, actually, it makes perfect sense because it is like a little diorama already, isn't it? So, <laughs> but um, we, we will see. We're going to get them all, I'm telling you. We're going to get them all. Every, I don't know, every few weeks, there's going to be a new VR game, I bet you. Arms VR. That would be, this is the problem, is that that would be amazing, or a new punch out or something like that. But um, it's this strap business. It's this, their insistence that you've got to hold it. I just don't, it makes me think that third parties might do stuff like that. But I just don't think, I've got a feeling Nintendo are not going to do it. We will see. Um, there's rumours that they did it strapless, so they got a, a younger age rating. Like, if it, was, um, if it was strapped to your head, it's like 13 or something. But if it was without a strap, they could get this 7 rating. That would make sense, yeah. But maybe updates to other games, they, they can have it so it can be in, strapped to your face. But this relying on people doing it themselves, strapping it to them, you know, so it's unless a third party releases in a headset, who knows? I mean, we'll see how that goes. On the Switch already, there's loads of VR games on the Switch already. So Battlezone got released on the Switch a few uh, few months ago. I had that on the PlayStation VR. It's a great VR game. So that can be updated. Thumper is Thumper in VR. That would be great, yeah. They need to release Tetris. Yeah, Keep Talking or It Explodes or something, which looks really interesting. It's basically one person's in the VR and they've got the, the, the bomb with all the wires and lit switches and stuff like that. And people around you are reading the manual and sort of telling you, all right, you need to cut this wire or press this button and you've got to talk to each other to sort of like, which bomb is it? Sounds amazing as a party game. That's, um, so there's loads of games that are already on the Switch. See, see, that couldn't work with the Switch because there'd be no TV for the... For other people to see. Mm-hmm. No, it can because it, how that game works anyway is the other people because uh, they can see what you're. Oh, they're on seeing. their mobile phones. The, yeah, they're not supposed to see the bomb. Yeah. Oh, so right. The, okay. The idea is that you're with the bomb. It's like you say, like a spy film. You're with the bomb, and obviously the bomb's different. It's, it's completely different. So you've got to explain what you're seeing to the people in the room, and then they've got the manuals which you can just have on your smartphone, like on. I think it's like a PDF or something, and they, they're, everyone's looking through it and going, right, I think it's this. Bit. so maybe you need to cut this wire sounds sounds fun to me I see. yeah but that's that's out already again a little update maybe it's going to be really simple so i think third parties could go go in it and like you say maybe tetris effect maybe other sort of um, online games i don't know we will see what goes on there i am particularly giddy about all that and that concludes our first nintendo review news pod thank you for listening to the nintendo review podcast If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe, give us a like and ask us a question. You can find this very podcast on all good podcast providers such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn and YouTube. Just search for the Nintendo Review Podcast. We are also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Discord, YouTube and our very own website nintendoreview.co.uk where you'll find great content such as news, reviews and impressions. Drop by and say hello.